A long time ago, there lived a very beautiful couple called Kalu and Ronke. They were the pastors at a local church in Ijebuode. Kalu and Ronke were very peaceful people in the community and people loved them. Ronke struggled with childbearing. She had an undetectable condition which made it difficult for her to conceive. Her mother-in-law became a thorn in her flesh, constantly calling her names for not being able to have a child. This almost drove Pastor Kalu and Ronke into depression. Kalu's mother was constantly disturbing him to take a second wife and send Ronke out of his house. Mama, I cannot do that. I love my wife so much and when the time is right, we will have children of our own. Kalu said to his mother, Is it when you become very old, you will start talking about children? Perhaps I must have been dead by then. You are my only child and it is very important that you start bearing children, Mama said to Kalu as she began to cry. That night, Kalu could not sleep. He questioned God on why he could not have children of his own. Even when he prays for couples at his church to conceive and God answers them. Why is our own case different? Kalu cried with Ronke that night. Ronke kept her faith and they continued to pray, hoping that one day their prayers would be answered. One day, when Ronke was coming from the market, she suddenly fainted. The people around rushed her to the nearest hospital before informing Kalu at the church about what had happened. Later that day, the doctor announced to them that she was pregnant. They were so happy. At last, our prayers have been answered, Ronke joyfully said to her husband as they hugged each other tightly. That day was one of the happiest days of their lives. After Ronke was discharged from the hospital, they went home and shared the news with Mama. Mama was so happy. She danced all through the night as the atmosphere was filled with joy. Few months passed, Ronke's belly became noticeable. They announced it in church and that was the beginning of unexpected favors. People began to shower them with favor, gifts and all sorts of good things. Pastor Kalu and his wife Ronke moved out of their rented apartment into their own home. They bought a car. The church began to grow with speed, their businesses began to expand, and the favors continued to flow in their home, ever since Ronke conceived. The baby brought light into their home, and their lives never remained the same. After a few months, Ronke went into labor. It was a tough battle, where she lost a lot of blood, which almost claimed her life due to the complication. Ronke had a baby girl. That was the happiest day of their lives. Mama was filled with joy. She danced and praised God that day like she had never done before. The news of Pastor Kalu's newborn baby spread round the town and people were happy for them. After all these years, finally there is a cry of a baby in their home. Some villagers said as they celebrated with them. After a few days, a ceremony was held for the child's naming and she was named Ibukun. Ibukun was the apple of her parents' eye. Mama pampered her so much. She was loved by her family who gave her everything she ever needed. Few years passed. Ibukun grew to be a very pretty girl. She attended the best school in the town. The family was living in love and happiness until Mama started with her persuasion again. Demanding for a grandson, Kalu paid no attention to her as Ibukun was enough for them, considering the complication Ronke had when she gave birth to her. I don't want to lose my wife, Mama. Please, stop asking for another child. We cannot give you what you want, Kalu pleaded with his mother. Mama did not let go. She constantly reminded Ronke of the need to give birth to a son as girls will only end up in their husband's kitchen. Ronke was traumatized. The pressure kept getting worse each day until she finally succumbed to Mama's pressure. Okay, Mama. Even if I agree to have another child, against my doctor's advice, how will I do that? 
Remember, I have difficulties conceiving, Ronke said to Mama. It won't be difficult this time, especially now that your womb is open. All you have to do is go and remove that birth control implant your doctor gave to you and start taking these herbs. I got it from a very powerful herbalist. A lot of people have testified to it. Don't worry, my daughter. Nothing will happen to you, Mama said to Ronke. The next day, Ronke went to a nearby clinic and removed the implant. She began to take the herbs as instructed by Mama, and truly, it did not take time before she became pregnant. Kalu was shocked at the news because he knew Ronke was on birth control. Ronke hid everything from Kalu, saying the conception was a miracle. Mama was happy. At last, there will be a son in this house. But what they did not know was that Ronke's body was not ready for another child. She had an atopic pregnancy which also altered her entire system and she became very sick even after terminating the pregnancy, hence leading to her death. Ronke died few months later. This news shook the entire town and Kalu never remained the same again. Mama kept the secret to herself because Kalu would never forgive her if he found out. Kalu mourned her for a long time, partly blaming himself for not being more careful. Young Ibukun had to live a life without her mother. She would cry herself to sleep most nights, but that did not bring Ronke back. After a couple of years, Mama began to advise Kalu to take another wife so Ibokun could have a mother and siblings, but Kalu refused. Mama did not back down. She went into the town in search of beautiful women from good homes. She introduced them to Kalu, but Kalu turned them down. Mama was so desperate to have a grandson to the extent she came up with an evil plan. One night, as Kalu was eating, Mama added some drugs to Kalu's drink. After some time, Kalu could not control himself anymore. Mama took Ibokun with her to the quarters that night, leaving Kalu with half-naked Teju, a girl she wanted him to marry, on the same roof. Kalu could not help himself, and so he slept with Teju. When he woke up the next morning, he was shocked with what had happened. Kalu apologized to her, still confused how she got into his house that night. Mama was so happy that her plan worked. Few weeks passed, Teju became pregnant for Pastor Kalu. Kalu was angry and confused, but he had no choice than to marry her as it would bring scandal to the church if they find out that he impregnated a girl he was not married to. Pastor Kalu married Teju and they began to live under the same roof with Ibokun. But this was just the beginning of their doom. Few months later, Teju gave birth to a set of twin girls, Taiwo and Kende. All was well until she started maltreating Iboku. When Mama found out about this, she took Iboku away from the house. Iboku and Mama began to live together. The people in the church did not like Teju as she was no good, often putting Pastor Kalu in a bad light causing members to leave the church. Pastor Kalu threatened to divorce her, but Teju begged him, promising him that she would change. But all this was just an act. Few months later, Teju became pregnant again, and she gave birth to a boy named Tayo. Mama was so happy about the arrival of the child, but Teju did not allow her to touch him, talk more of taking care of him. Mama was heartbroken. She began to regret all she ever did in desperation. She decided to focus solely on raising Ibukun. Ibukun was a very happy and respectful child, and Mama was so proud of her. However, tragedy struck. Mama became very ill. She knew she was not going to make it, and so she gave Ibukun back to Kalu making him promise that she would take good care of her before she died. But this promise was short-lived. Kalu died few weeks after, leaving Ibukun with her wicked stepmother, Teju. 
She maltreated Ibukun, making her to do all the chores in the house. This went on for years. Ibukun became very used to it. Her step-siblings would sit doing nothing while Ibukun would be the one walking, doing the chores and running errands. She stopped her education so as to be able to work and take care of the family. This was not a choice for her, as she was forced by her stepmother. Years passed. Ibokun grew up to be a very beautiful girl in the town. She was very hardworking and people loved her. Whenever she came to the market, people who knew her parents would quickly buy everything for her so she could go home and rest not knowing another walk was waiting for her at home. One day, when Ibokun was coming back from the market as usual, she was hit by a car. They quickly rushed her to the hospital and informed her stepmother. What kind of trouble has this girl brought to me now? Teju said in anger before going to the hospital to see her. On getting there, she saw Ahaji Kofi, a very rich man in the town. He told her that he was the one who hit Ibukun with his car. Ahaji Kofi compensated them and gave them some money for her upkeep. Teju collected the money. It was a huge sum of money. She had barely seen that amount of money before. Teju settled the hospital bill and they went home. When Ibukun was well, Ahaji Kofi came to the house to visit and see how she was doing. Teju saw this as an opportunity to milk him. What if I pimp her to Ahaji? He would be giving us enough money as he's very rich. Teju said to her wayward daughters, Taiwo and Kende, who were of no use to the society. The twins saw this to be a brilliant idea as Ahaji was known for humanizing. When he was about leaving, Teju told him about the idea also stating that Ibokun was a virgin. Ahaji Kofi was very happy at the arrangement. He asked Teju to bring Ibokun to his guest house that evening and also gave her a token of 50,000 Naira. Teju was happy. Imagine what I will get once the deal is concluded. She shared the excitement with her daughters. That night, Teju gave some fruit to Ibokun to take to Ahaji Kofi at his guest house, Ibokun unaware of the fate that awaited her. She thought it was a way of appreciating the help he had been rendering when she was unwell. When she got there, she saw Ahaji Kofi sitting on the bed. She offered the basket of fresh fruit as instructed by her stepmother Teju. Ahaji Kofi smiled. You are truly new. Sit on the bed with me, he said to Ibokun. Ibokun refused and begged to take her leave. But to her greatest shock, the door was locked. Ibokun began to knock, but no one opened, as it was locked from the outside by one of Ahaji Kofi's boys. Ibokun begged Ahaji Kofi to open the door, but before she knew what was happening, Ahaji Kofi started taking off his clothes. And with a twinkle of an eye, Ahaji Kofi forced his way on her, neglecting her pleading and screams. Ibokun wept all through that night, calling for help, but no one came to her rescue. When Ahaji Kofi left the room, Ibokun found a way and escaped through the window. Unaware of what her stepmother Teju had done, she ran home and began to cry. Teju pretended to care so that Ibokun could trust her, but she had other plans. That morning, she went to the same herbalist Mama used many years ago and asked her to give her the same medicine in higher dose. Every evening, she would pour it in Ibokun's water or food. After she was done eating or drinking, Ibokun would not be able to control herself anymore. She would run to Ahaji Kofi to satisfy her desires. This went on for a very long time. Teju became very rich. Ibogun begged Ahaji Kofi not to tell anyone, especially her family, not knowing it was all a setup to use her for prostitution. Soon, Teju began to give her the substance day and night 
After some other men showed interest in her, Ibokun began to go out with different men, unable to have control over her body and mind. It did not take long. The news of Ibokun, a pastor's daughter, spread round the town like wildfire. People started talking. Isn't that the pastor's daughter? Some sympathized, while others, who did not know who her parents were, condemned her. After some time, the wife of these men were fed up. They looked for Ibokun and gave her the beating of her life, threatening to kill her. Ibokun had no choice but to run for her dear life. She did not want her stepmother to know what had been going on, as she would make life a living hell for her. Ibokun secretly went into Teju's room. She saw some bundles of cash. Ibokun took enough to start life afresh and she fled the town. She relocated to two towns away from her. When Teju discovered that Ibokun had escaped, she was angry as her source of income was gone. She had collected advance payments from some men, the money from which Ibokun collected. When the men asked her back for their money, Teju refused to give them the remaining or sell her jewelry to pay them back. To Ibukun's greatest shock, her urge to sleep with men vanished. She became herself again. It was that moment it dawned on her that her stepmother Teju was the one behind everything. Ibukun felt betrayed and she vowed to get justice. She teamed up with some people from the NGO, specialized in women's rights, abuse and trafficking, and they began their investigation. Meanwhile, one of the men Teju was owing money vowed to teach her a lesson. Him and his friends kidnapped Taiwo and Kende and had their way with them, leaving them at the brink of death. If she can use her stepdaughter for prostitution, her daughters should not be left out. They dropped some money on them and left them in front of their house. When Teju saw her daughters drenched in their own blood, almost lifeless, she screamed for help. Tayo quickly drove them to the hospital where it was confirmed that truly the men had their way with them multiple times. Tayo asked Teju if she suspected anyone and Teju in her broken state told him Tayo, in anger and rage, went with his friends to avenge his sisters, but he met with his untimely death, as the man was no match for him. This news completely shattered Teju, and she immediately knew Nemesis had caught up with her. She was admitted in the same hospital as her children, after her blood pressure almost rose to the roof. She started regretting all the evil she had ever done. From secretly seducing Pastor Kalu, killing him after he threatened to divorce her the second time, and all she did to Ibukun. But it was too late. Ibukun, the NGO, alongside with the police, had concluded their investigation, and with enough evidence, they arrested Ahaji Kofi and Teju, who later confessed the names of the rest men. They were all sentenced by the court of law to years in prison for their various crimes. Ibokun, though still traumatized, got justice. Unlike some siblings, she threw her stepsisters, Taiwo and Kende, out of the house as she was the sole proprietor of Kalu's estate, according to his will. Taiwo and Kende had no choice than to start working hard. The experiences they had with those men made them to realize what Ibokun was going through. They apologized to her and begged her for forgiveness. For Ibokun's own healing, she forgave them but kept her boundary. Few weeks later, Teju died in prison after her wicked heart was unable to take her punishment any longer. Ibokun found peace and she lived happily ever after with her newfound love, Pastor Ayomide, and her father's church regained its glory. The lesson from this story is that evil plans and actions 
often backfires and righteousness ultimately prevails. That is the end of our story for today. If you liked it, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you are always updated with our latest stories. We love connecting with you, so comment below and let us know where you are watching from. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.